Ecstasy seized on the streets is tested in the Drug Enforcement Administration's lab. When we test them, we see a variety of different drugs. Um, there's no quality control on the street when it comes to drugs. On these seemingly ecstasy tablets that we have, we found uh, MDMA, methamphetamine, ketamine, caffeine. So if you think you're getting ecstasy, you are not quite sure what could be in that tablet. This drug altered his brain. He woke to a broken reality, and occasionally he said that he experienced a portal into hell. He needed appropriate treatment and unfortunately didn't find it. If we kind of just walk around, you know, doing things without really knowing what effect they have on us, then we're just walking around kind of blind. I was part of the Just Say No and the D.A.R.E. era too. I went to school, like in high school and middle school, and they made us sign petitions that I will not drink or use drugs. The harm reduction approach is one of the most important approaches because Just Say No, telling people not to do drugs doesn't work. People are going to be presented with these opportunities, peer pressure, all kinds of factors that could play into why they would take the drug, maybe not under full cognizance of the repercussions. It's unrealistic to expect people just to say no every single time, but if we can give people the knowledge, maybe they will say no, but if they don't say no, here's how we can help them. With the education that I've been lucky enough to receive, I know what to do. Having that mental checklist of drug basics, harm reduction basics in my toolkit as a young person around other young people who are likely to use said substances, lives are saved and bad consequences are prevented. The initiatives that we've been working on at the foundation all we've been trying to do is make healthcare professionals aware of what's happening and putting that into their perspective. Even professionals don't always know what to look for, and so we're giving the professionals in the field some knowledge that they can give to their clients and patients. Primary care providers don't necessarily have the experience or exposure to deal with someone with a first episode of psychosis related to a recreational drug. If somebody tells you, I feel like I'm living with a portal to hell, say, wait a second, even though his heart rate and blood pressure are normal, something is still off. We're taking Greg's story and we're able to use that as an opportunity to help future generations of providers learn how to best manage and communicate with their patients around these topics. One of the great things about the full code platform is, well, we can develop simulations and author these stories for our students here at the university. They also have a large network of users across the world. They experience an event with a patient. They make their own choices, whether it's a web-based patient in full code, a mannequin or a standardized patient simulation. We can develop and send those case studies out to other students at other institutions or other providers at other places. They're less likely to make mistakes because they're more comfortable, they're more confident, and they're more competent in their skills after using simulation as a training tool. You can really think about the impact this can have on helping people learn how to practice and how to handle different cases as they see them in the real world.